Today we're going to learn how to rotoscope using Rotobrush 2 in Adobe After Effects. Before we get started, you can download the footage I'll be working with from the link in the description if you want to follow along. So I've already imported our footage, I'm just going to drag and drop it into our workspace to create a composition with matching settings. Now, if you're importing a longer clip and you only want to rotoscope a small portion of it, you can move the playhead to where you want your clip to start. And we're just going to find a nice little place to start, maybe around here. And we're going to hit B to bring in our in point. We can also set a new out point by using the shortcut N instead. Right click the work area and select trim comp to work area. Our composition should now be trimmed to the in and out points that we set up just now. The last thing we'll set up is optional, but for the best results, turn off fast previews by selecting this icon here and making sure that it's set to off final quality. To start rotoscoping, double click on our footage to open the layer window and then head over to the top toolbar and select the rotor brush tool. If you click and hold the icon, it'll open up the selection menu where you can choose between the rotor brush tool and the refine edge tool. We'll come back to the refine edge tool later, but for now, let's just go with the rotor brush tool. Before we move on and do anything else, make sure that the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline by dragging it or by hitting the shortcut home. Let's get a closer look by holding control and scrolling or using the shortcut comma or full stop. You can see that our cursor is now a green circle. This means that we're painting our foreground or in other words, we're adding to our map. You can also resize the cursor or brush by holding control and dragging up to increase the size or down to decrease it. Our first stroke will be directly across our subject, making sure to pass through any regions that have different colors or brightnesses. You can see that our selected area is highlighted in magenta, this little outline here, and it's just selected the middle portion. So we'll go in and we'll paint over the areas we want included into our selection. Adobe suggests using as few strokes as possible, so make sure that your brush size is appropriate for what you're painting. If you happen to make a mistake or Rotor Brush ends up selecting way too much of your frame, you can hold Alt on Windows or Option on Mac to bring up this red cursor. When you see this red cursor, it basically means that you're painting in the background or removing from your map. To get the best results, we have to make sure that we have a very clean base frame to work off of. It doesn't need to be perfect, but make sure that these lines here are as close to the edges as possible. To help you see those edges, you can change the view modes from the channel menu in the layer panel. The first view shows the alpha channel, the second shows the alpha boundary, which is what we've been using so far, and the final view shows the alpha overlay, which shows the source layer with the background overlaid with a solid color. You can change the solid color using this color picker. If you have a decent computer, you can probably change the quality to best as well. Changing it to best basically just feeds more information into the algorithm meaning it can predict the edges much more better. In this situation, it was hard to tell the difference between the foreground and the background, but it had no problems with the quality set to best. Once we're happy, it's time to propagate our map. We can do this in two ways. We can either press spacebar and let After Effects do all the work, or we can get a more accurate map by walking through frame by frame and making adjustments to any inaccuracies we see or any imperfections. Once we've propagated our mat and we're happy with it, we can then freeze it. What this basically does is locks the mat in place so that the rotor brush doesn't repropagate the edges. We're still able to make adjustments to the properties on the mat in the effect controls panel, but we won't be able to add or remove from our selection. If we end up needing to do this, we can simply unfreeze the mat, make our changes, repropagate, and then refreeze. And now it's finally time to refine our mat. Head over to the effect controls panel for the rotor brush and we will see the rotor brush properties. Feather softens the edges. Contrast determines how defined the edge is. Shift edge will bring in or push out the edges of our selection and reduce chatter smooths out any small imperfections in our map. We can also turn on motion blur if our footage has motion blur or decontaminate edge colors which removes any bleed from the background we might get from things like color fringing. Remember the refine edge tool? Well, now it's time to use it if you need to. This tool helps pick up subtle nuances in the edges for things like hair, fuzzy clothing, and things with fine detail that the rotor brush would otherwise miss. It's very tempting to use this tool immediately after creating your base frame, but it's best to wait until you refine your selection across your entire clip. The refine edge tool works by painting over our existing edges, adding more detail and precision as a result. 
Once we paint over an edge, we'll see an x-ray view showing all the little details we picked up from our stroke. The parts in black are ignored while the parts in white are added to our mat. We'll propagate our mat again by going through frame by frame as we did earlier making any adjustments as we go. You'll notice that the refine edge tool has its own properties just like the rotor brush tool that you can alter independently. Once we're done, we'll refreeze and that's it. We've successfully extracted the subject from our scene and can now do a bunch of cool things with it. We can do selective color adjustments, duplicate, comp our subject into a new scene, or even make some dank memes. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for your time, friends. As always, if you have any requests, leave a comment and I'll try my best to make it happen. We've actually got a couple lined up, so look out for my Twitch VOD editing tips and tricks video for Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve coming out soon. You guys know what to do to support the channel and always remember, stay creative and go for broke.